Hi everyone, and welcome to our second example question lesson on transducers. The last lesson we did, transducers lesson one, example questions, we used this bit of information here, which is a chart. And it basically said for these different temperatures down here, we get different resistances. Because for a thermistor transducer, as the temperature changes, the resistance changes. And that is an example of turning heat energy into electrical energy. In this lesson now, we're not going to be using this chart, which is why I've crossed it out. We're going to be using this graph over here. But I want you to recognize that it's the same type of information. However, however, we get a lot more information from a line here than for discrete values over here. For this chart here, we had temperature in this column. For the graph here, we have temperature on the horizontal axes. The chart over here, we had resistance in the right-hand column. And here we have resistance on the vertical axes. This chart tells us that for a certain thermistor A, at 10 degrees, the resistance was 4 ohms. This chart over here tells us that for a certain thermistor B, so a different thermistor, at 10 degrees, the resistance is 8 kilo ohms. So these describe different resistors. And the reason I say you get more information from a graph here is because you can look at any point on the graph, and there are, well, effectively infinite number of points to look at, to find the resistance at any temperature you want here between about 10 degrees and 90 degrees. Whereas here, if you wanted to know the resi resistance at 15 degrees, well, you're just guessing, really. Let's look at a question involving thermistor B. I've drawn to the lower left a small circuit. All it's got is a 120 volt battery and a thermistor as the only element in the circuit besides the battery. And the question shall be, at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the resistance and what is the current going through this circuit? So we know the heat being applied to this thermistor is 25 degrees. We go over to this graph here, find the 25 degree mark, and then look directly above it to the graph. You then draw a horizontal line from the graph over to this axis over here to find the amount of resistance given by the thermistor at that temperature. And the resistance happens to be about 4 kilo ohms. So resistance is equal to 4, I like to put it in ohms, so 4 times 10 to the 3 ohms. And the current flowing through this circuit here, well, since this is the only component in the circuit besides the battery, it must have 120 volts across it, potential difference. Using Ohm's law, V equals IR, so V on R, equals I, we can get the current by itself, and then we just solve. So V equals 120 divided by R equals 4 times 10 to the 3. That comes to 0.03 amps. Moving on to the next question. If the temperature were to change, so now not looking at a question, that's question one, question two, a room in which the temperature is 50 degrees, T equals 50 degrees Celsius. Again, let's find the resistance and the temperature. The resistance we find first. Sorry, the resistance and the current. Confusing my T's and I's there. Resistance and current. The resistance comes first because we can read it straight from the graph here. Go to the 50 degree mark on the horizontal axis, move directly above to the graph, and then draw a horizontal line across to the vertical axis over here. It looks like we have about 1.2 kilo ohms of resistance. So R equals 1.2 times 10 to negative times 10 to the 3 
ohms. And then current is equal to V on R, which is equal to 120 divided by 1 1.2 times 10 to the 3. That should come out as something nice. Yep. 0 0.1 amps. As the temperature has gone up, so it was 25 degrees, that's a bit confusing, now I've put that one in there, 25 degrees to 50 degrees, the amount of current has also increased. And that indicates that the resistance in the circuit, because when you have low resistance you get high current, the resistance in the circuit has actually decreased. making this a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. We can make this question more difficult by adding in a second resistor to the circuit and this one will make a variable resistor. So one which does not change resistance with the environment but which we can change ourselves as we please. So it's generally drawn like so. We can change the resistance of this to whatever we want really. And I'll also change the amount of voltage in this circuit to 12 volts. And then since we're de designing a useful circuit here, I'll put a sensor here, a voltmeter, by which we measure the voltage across this particular resistor. So thermistor here, variable resistor here. If we set the variable resistor to 2 kilo ohms and the temperature is equal to 60 degrees, what would be the voltage out across this particular variable resistor? First of all, the component with more resistance receives more voltage because it's a series circuit here. And we don't really know which of these components receives more voltage because we don't know which has more resistance. We only know that this has 2 kilo ohms. This right now is a mystery. So the first step is figuring out how much resistance is given by that particular thermistor. So we go to our graph, find the 60 degree mark, draw a vertical line straight up and then a horizontal line straight across. At, at 60 degrees Celsius this thermistor has 1 kilo ohm of resistance. So this has 2 kilo ohms, this has 1 kilo ohm. So this resistor here will get the majority share of these 12 volts. Then we can use our V out equals V in times R of RT, our voltage divider equation to figure out the amount of voltage across this thermistor here. So V out is equal to V in, so there are 12 volts available to the entire circuit multiplied by. Now the R always refers to the component across which you're measuring V out. So that would be 2 times 10 to the 3 ohms divided by the total resistance which is 2 times 10 to the 3 plus 1 times 10 to the 3. And then here's a tip if you're dealing with the same uh, unit for ohms, so kilo ohms here, in each of these values here, you don't actually have to include the times 10 to the 3. You can just deal in kilo ohms for now because it's a ratio. So 12 times 2 kilo ohms over the a total of 3 kilo ohms, which equals to 8 volts. So when we set this variable resistor to 2 kilo ohms, and it's 60 degrees, we should get 8 volts across this variable resistor here. And then a bonus question I'll ask. If the temperature were to decrease from 60 degrees to something lower, would the V out go up or down? Think about that for a second yourself. If the temperature were to decrease, would the V out here go up or down? the V out here would actually go down. As the temperature decreases, the resistance of the thermistor increases. So this would be pushed above one kilo ohm. 
as the resistance of this element increases, it hogs more of these, of these volts available, available here, leaving fewer volts across the variable resistor and therefore we'd get a lower V-out reading. Now we'll ask a question. I'll turn all this, destroy these bits of information here. This is the last question I'll ask. This question says, if I want to get, uh, I have to change this, if I want to get four volts out across here, when the temperature is equal to 40 degrees, what resistance should I set my variable resistor to? So V out is equal to 4. And the question is, what is the resistance here? Well, first of all, at 40 degrees, we have about 2 kilo ohms of resistance. So the resistance up here is equal to 2 kilo ohms. We can use our V out equals V in times R on RT because the R here is the mystery. So 4 volts V out is equal to V in 12 multiplied by the mystery R divided by the mystery R plus 2 kilo ohms because that gives us the total resistance of the circuit. If I leave it in kilo ohms here, I'm also admitting to myself that I'm going to get an answer R in kilo ohms. Dividing both sides by 12, flipping both sides over, simplifying both sides down, taking one from both sides, multiplying both sides by R, dividing both sides by 2. What have I done there? R is equal to 1 kilo ohm. So if at 40 degrees I want to get a reading of 4 volts across here, I have to set my variable resistor to 1 kilo ohm of resistance. And by changing that variable resistor. If I had a circuit that would say switch off at a certain voltage, I could change the voltage it switches off at. And this is the basis for a lot of home heaters. I hope uh, this lesson and the last lesson hope, uh, helped you master how to answer these transducer thermistor questions. The other type of transducer question that pops up is the light dependent resistor which behaves very similarly to this, except instead of temperature here, we have um, light intensity.